so in previous session what we have discussed is like so how to create java classes how to create an object how to access members and how to write methods and all so these details will occur into java I think hope you how to create an object what are the various kinds of members static members and then non static right we have gone through basic details of uh, data types and all so in this session we'll just explore a little more java like what we see in this session is like we'll see so how to apply conditions and then loops so simply they are called control structures in java control structures in java so there are various conditions that are available in java so what are these conditions and then what are these control structures like so before exploring like i think i forgot a simple topic in set so that topic is operators operators in java of course we'll see what are the operators most frequently we use so the operators are classified into so various categories one is like arithmetic operators under arithmetic operators we have the following operators like plus is for addition how to use so the expression could be like this a plus b and minus is for subtraction and expression is pretty much similar that of regular notation so a minus b and the asterisk symbol is used for product multiplication and the expression is quite similar as we use regularly a asterisk b and we use a forward slash for normal division it means the output will be a minus b here you'll be getting the quotient and we use another symbol called modulus so this is for modular division so what do you mean by modular division is like you'll be getting here reminder so for quotient you need to use forward slash for reminder you need to use modular symbol so these are the basic arithmetic operators we use in java and So these are the basic things we are discussing like so arithmetic operators and then we have relational operators so arithmetic operators generally helpful in writing expressions in order to evaluate like in a, evaluate a particular value so evaluating calculations and computations can be done using arithmetic operators whereas relational operators will help you in building some logic so based on a particular condition based on a particular constraint so what the relational operators will contain like you have relational operators so this symbol is used for greater than so this symbol is used as greater than equal to and this symbol for less than and this symbol for less than equal 
and this symbol means two equals to symbol used for equals and a not symbol followed by equals implies not equals. So these are the relational operators. So what is the main agenda in order to find out what kind of relation is existing between two different entities we use normally these relational operators greater than greater than equals to less than less than equals to double equals to and then not equals to so and we have logical operators logical operators so what are these logical operators so these logical operators will help you in formulating boolean expressions and combining two or more expressions in order to evaluate so what are the operators that are available are like in logical operators we have logical end logical end so logical end symbol is with double ampersand symbol so this is called logical end and logical or so this is for logical or and we have something called not so this is what logical not means how these operations will be working let me take with one particular suppose there is a p one expression q another expression so what could be p and q and what will be p or q and what is negation p so if you see if expression p evaluates like true value and q also true then p and q means the conjunction of p and q will be true means the end symbol results in true if and only if if both the expressions are true in all other cases it is false means P or Q will see K. And second thing, if P is true and Q is false, obviously P and Q will be false. And if P is false and Q is true, P and Q will be false. If P is false and Q is false, so these are the possible conditions permutations you have like P and Q means if both the expressions not only both you can join n number of expressions so where if if all the expressions have the same truth value true then the conjunction is true means the end will be true if not it is false means if P and Q are true then only P and Q will be true but what is the truth value of P or Q? The condition is like if any one of the expression is true. Means in the first case P true and Q true obviously P or Q will be true. And if P true, so if one of the expression is true it's enough. So this will be true. And if P here also Q is true so it at least one expression is true so the R will be true so here in this case it is false but what about not not means it's a negation it's a negation means it is like opposite if P is true uh, so negation of P will be false if P is true again here the negation of P is false if P is false then the negation will be true like we have seen something like logical gates in your electronic engineering or some statements and things in your 10 standards like so this is how the logical operators will work with so these are the logical operators apart from these we have uh, different operators like the next category of operator is assignment operator what is assignment operator is like equals to is called as assignment operator we have used equals to well before so where equals to double equals to we have used right in relational operators I have given double equals to but now I am using single equals to and I'm calling this as assignment operator what do you mean by assignment operator is that how we use assignment operator let's say 
there is an expression like a equals to 5 means the value 5 is assigned to a that is what assignment operator if I use like a equals to equals to 5 means I am comparing whether a value is equals to 5 or not there is a lot of difference single equals to means the right side value will be assigned to the left side variable but if I use double equals to in the sense that I am comparing whether both the values are equal or not let's say b equals to c means I am giving the value of I'm copying the value of C into a variable called B but if I write like B equals to equals to C what does it mean I'm checking whether B value and C value are equal or not so this is the difference between single equals to and double equals to double equals to is called equals to operator single equals to is called assignment operator is that clear assignment operator and we have more operators but still we have something called increment and decrement operator like so in increment and decrement operator we use only two symbols plus plus and minus minus plus plus means if I write a equals to let's say one if I write a plus plus what does it mean a plus plus means a equals to a plus one a equals to a plus min means if I write a plus plus a will become 2 minus minus means decrement by 1 plus plus means increment by 1 so in a shortcut we will write increment and decrement operators as plus plus and then minus minus so with this operators what we can do is that we can go with the conditional <coughs> statements of Java so if we look into the control structures of Java, so what are the various control structures of Java? First we'll see the conditions and then we'll see the loops. So what are the various conditions that are available? So, so first we'll see what is if condition. If condition. What is if condition structure is very simple. If followed by an expression, means you need to write here in the brackets an expression or a condition. So if that expression is true, you need to execute whatever that code available in this particular block. Whatever the code that is available in this block. So this block will be executed only when this condition is true. If the condition is false, whatever the code you are writing here will not be executed. For lay, let's say example, I'm opening our Eclipse. I am creating one more class over here. I will make my class name as condition demo, let's say. And I am taking in method. Click on finish. Now what we are trying to do is that just I want to check how the if, if statement will work. Let's say I am taking one member in TA equals to 10. In TA equals to 10. Let's say I am writing a condition if A greater than B or if A greater than 0. I am writing a condition if A greater than 0 means if this condition satisfy If this condition satisfy, what I want to do is that I want to display the statement. I want to display the value of A. If not, I won't display. If A is greater than 0, then only display. If A is not greater than, I'm not going to display anything. Let's say I'm running this program. So if you observe the console, the 10 has been displayed because a value is greater than 0. Now let me check. 
I am giving the A value as 0. The program has been executed but you don't have any result because you ask to display the A value only when if it is greater than 0. What this if condition is illustrating is that whenever this particular expression evaluated as true, if this value is true, then only this particular code will be executed. In all other cases, this code will not be executed. And one more thing you have to remember is that while writing a condition, so the if statement should not terminate with any semicolon because this if complete will be treated as one statement so you should not put any semicolon over here so how many number of statements you can have in this particular block but if you have only single statement no need to put any float brackets suppose if you have only one statement no need to have any block you can directly write that statement and put semicolon over here but in this case you have one statement means no need to have a bracket also here if more than one statement you need to put the brackets here and immediately after the condition you should not put the semicolon if in the brackets you need to write some condition now what I want to do is that so this is how an if will be working so of if else will be if else will be so if same thing the conditional expression you need to write If this expression is true, you are executing this particular block. If the expression is false, so you need to ex execute some other thing. Means when this particular condition is true, you are executing the if part. If the condition is false, you are executing the else part. See, let's say we'll explain with an example. In the same case, I'm giving the value a is 10, let's say a is 10 and what I want to do is that if a greater than 0 I want to test whether a is a positive number or negative number so I want to display a is a positive integer I want to write like this if a is positive how do you define, uh, confirm whether a given number is positive or negative? If it is greater than 0, it is a positive. If it is less than 0, it is negative. You want to say that A is positive. If it is less than 0, you want to say A is a, a negative number. So, this is how I code it. Just I click on and then execute this program if you see yes 10 is a positive number I got a result 10 is a positive number now I'll change the value of a to minus 8 so in in previous case what happened since a greater than 0 means 10 greater than 0 the condition is true the program executed only this particular step this step was not executed because it is under else. Now I change the value of a from 10 to minus 8. So and then I'll re-execute the program. Now if a minus 8 greater than 0, no, minus 8 is not greater than 0. So this condition is false. The if part was not executed and straight away you, your program control came to the else part and the else part was executed. 8 is a negative number. So this is how an if-else statement will be working. Like, so when we use this if-else statement, like you have an expected output, so already, and you capture some actual output on the screen, uh, some some name or some ID or some string, some text you captured. Uh, what you're doing is that you, whatever the captured uh, output, you are matching with your expected output and you're saying that if this is matching you can say this test was passed or login was successful or transaction is successful if the test was failed means if the match was not done so in the else part you what you can write is that oh, yes, your login was not successful transaction was cancelled or something means in order to verify in order to combine in order to relate the expected value with actual value we use uh, 
if statement so if else statement so if condition if the condition satisfied whatever the code you want to write should put in the flat bracket else whatever the code that comes under false part should be put it in this uh, block so is it clear like if else statement yes it is yes yeah no so like that we have if else later like if followed by else if followed by else if and now else and we have something called statement what is this which statement so if you see if how many paths the if is having how many paths of execution you have only two paths right if it is true it has to travel in one path if it is false it has to travel in another path right so it is having only two paths in the two path you need to select one right but what is switch statement is that it's a multi path selection multi path selection let's say example like not like yes or no or one or two confirm or cancel not like that so what is switch statement like it's like a menu driven programming like let's say press 1 for customer care press 2 for recharge press 3 for some kind of thing press 4 for something so click on account information click on withdraw click on deposit means it is not you need you have one option to do you have multiple options to do so it is your responsibility to select one means depending upon the user choice the program will be executed so that that statement is a switch statement it is not for one particular path you have multiple paths you need to select one path in this case like if you open a home page how many you if you open a home page normally there are mul multiple tabs it's up to you on which tab you have to click it so this switch case statement is like you have multiple options based on the user choice you need to select one particular option so we'll try to demonstrate this with statement uh, with one example like i'm writing one switch statement like okay We'll take a simple example for better understanding. So I am taking int a comma b comma c. Let's say I'm taking int a comma b comma c. I just initialized c value to zero. Let's let let it be. And I'm taking a equals to ten and b equals to twenty. Now what I want to try is that I am taking one other variable called choice. So choice. This choice variable is like from the user but here before discuss the switch case statement so because I need to take the user input so I will let you know how to read input from the keyboard of course there are multiple methods in Java to get the input from keyboard but we'll use a simple thing so just for the name time being you remember so in order to use get the input from the keyboard in Java program so what is the output we know system dot out dot print in the same way there is input how to get the input in Java so there is a package called Java dot util package Java dot util package you need to import this package first and in this package we have a class called scanner class so with the scanner class object you can get the input for the time being we are reading an integer input so how to read the scan so there is a class called scanner how to create an object scanner some object equals to new scanner so like system dot out you have system dot in so the system dot in property should be given as parameter to this particular constructor scanner some object equals to new scanner system dot in what we are trying to read if you are trying to read an integer <coughs> int a equals to your scanner object dot next int so this is how you need to read an input from a keyboard so this particular two statements I want to use in this program 
So for that, what I need to do is that I need to import import Java dot util dot. I'm using only one class, right? Util dot and so what I want to do is that I want to create a scanner class object now. How to create a scanner class object? Scanner s equals to any name new scanner. So this should take your system dot in parameter. Like system dot out is representing your monitor. System dot in is representing your keyboard. So I want to get the value of ch from key, or I can get all the values from keyboard. Why to take statically? I will take dynamically. Okay. Now I will make this program a little interactive. So I'm asking. enter the value of a. I am asking the user to enter the value of a. How to get the a value? a equals to sc dot next int. So a is an integer. So I am writing. At the same time I want the value of b also. So how to get the value of b? So the same thing b is also an integer enter the value of b so you are getting the value of b also now what i want to do is that now i want to create a switch case statement uh, so what is the syntax of switch case statement and all those so but now after getting a value and b value what kind of operation i want to perform whether addition or subtraction division multiplication it depends upon the user choice so so I have no one option. If it is one addition, if it is two multiplication, not like that. I have four options. So if statement I cannot use, I need to use a switch statement. Before using switch statement, what I need to do is that I need to ask the user for the choice. Enter the user choice. But before entering the user choice, user should know what choice is available, right? So in order to educate the user, what I want to do is that I am creating multiple printf statements. In this printf statement, what I am trying to do is that I am saying 1 for addition, to for subtraction, three for division like multiplication for so let's say division suppose he don't want to perform anything he want to quit five like quit so based on his option, he can select. So you are asking the user to enter the value of the choice. Based on this choice, the program will execute. So how we need to create? So I am writing a switch statement. Switch. What you want to switch? You want to switch the user choice. And you need to write the case. So case 1 means if the user is entering 1, what you need to perform? C equals to A plus B. We need to perform C equals to A plus B. Yes. S2. S2 what you are going to perform? C equals to A minus B. In case 3,
c equals to a star b in case for c equal to a forward slash yeah case 5 you want to quit right yeah c equal to so, quit so you have a method called exit so you can right exit okay means you have given some option after quitting what you can do is that you can write your output the result is like the result will be stored in c right okay now i just execute this program see we wrote this program uh, like very interactively so let's observe the screen first it is asking for the value a if i give the value a let's say a value is 10 now it is asking the b value now i am giving b value let's say 20 and now it is it is giving me the menu enter the user choice 1 if i want addition 2 if i want subtraction 3 if i want multiplication 4 if i want division let's say i am selecting 4 4 for division right so 10 divided by 20 so 10 divided by 20 in the sense I'll be getting the value 0. A equals to this B equals to you should get the value right. Okay what happened here right in this switch case is sequential case 1 c equals to a plus b but it goes to case 4 but it, it is not coming out of the switch case immediately it is going for case 5 in this case what you need to do is that you need to use a statement after finishing case 1 you come out for that you need to use the statement called break after finishing case 2 you need to write break after finishing case 3, you need to write break. After finishing case 4, you need to write break. So break means after finishing that particular case, you should come out. If not, what happens, right? If you select one, it executes e equals to a plus b and it goes to next, it goes to next, it goes to next like that. Wherever you write break, so after executing that particular case, it comes out. So now I want to give the value 10, A value, at the same time B value, now I am giving the value 4, means I want division, now the result is 0. By 0, 10 divided by 20 is 0 0.5, since it is integer, it won't take uh, the number after precision, so, point earth, so it won't take the number after the rational point so you're getting only the zero the actually the value is 0 0.5 you should get only zero because you are taking only integer it cannot carry any floating point number it is displaying as zero so let me try for different input so a value let's say 10 b value let's say 12 
now I want to use input called 3 for multiplication 10 12 sir so the result is 120 means this program is completely executing based on the user choice means it's not like if and else if and else will have only two parts of execution but if you see here there are five parts of execution where you can select one path so this is called menu driven programming using switch case statement So, any doubts in this particular program like this, these all things are there in C language also. Whatever the basic language you have learned in your previous like in your studies in graduation or post graduation. So, all these are common things. Now, these are like conditional structures in Java. Of course, there are different combinations of ifs and all but so we are concerned with if statement if else statement and then switch case statement of course we rarely use switch case in selenium now we go for loops so like loops iterative statements so what kind of loops that exist in java like while loop do while loop and for loop while loop do while loop and for loop. So this while loop is called control enter loop. Control enter. So what is this loop? Any loop will perform the same thing. Any loop will perform the same thing. It executes repeatedly a particular block of statement. A set of suppose if you want to repeat a particular piece of code again and again and again and again. So then you are using this loop. Let's say I want to enter user ID and password. Let I want to fill so user details in a registration form. Let's say five details. If I want to fill 20 user details, I need to execute the same code for 20 times. So this is how the loops will be executing. Loops is for repetition. Loops is for repetition. So based on a particular condition, set of statements will be repeatedly executed. Let's say what is the structure of this while loop is while is a keyboard and this this while loop you need to write the expression or condition or expression and whatever the block or set of statements you need to write here so this is how a while loop looks like so it will be better if we see an example while loop let's say I want to display numbers from 1 to 10. How do you do that? I want to display the numbers from 1 to 10. If I ask you to display, how you display? You write like this, right? System dot out dot print ln. First, you'll display one, and immediately you write system dot out dot print ln two, right? Yeah. Every time, yeah. Means I am displaying one, two, and so. So how two is coming? What is here. the next statement? What is next statement? System dot out dot print ln three, right? Yeah. If you observe, if you take the first number one, and every time you add one, you will get the next number. Yes. Yes, right. What I can do is that using while loop. Ah, uh, so up to when you need to add until your number become ten, right? Because you want only up to ten. Whenever you are reaching 10, you need to stop it. So this, this is how you can build the logic. 
So how to use this statement in order to display the first 10 natural numbers? So using while loop. Of course, we'll see a couple of examples on loops because loops are the things we need to understand and we are mostly using in developing as well as testing also. So now we'll take one more class. Just I'll make heading while demo. Now what I want to do is that I want to display first 10 natural numbers, right? So I am taking one variable int i and I am making this i to 10, uh, I'm sorry, i to 1. Initial value of i is 1. Now what I want to do is that I am writing a condition while your i value until and unless your i is less than equals to 10, you want to display, right? is more than 10 you need to stop but until it is less than equals 10 you can display right this is how I wrote the logic now if I execute you observe so it is a forever loop because i value is 1 1 is always less than 10 one is always less than 10 because i value is not changing here now what you want to do is that you need to write here i value should be incremented by one i am writing i plus plus semicolon means once you display the i value and then increment i value by one save now if you execute see the output the program was not stopped okay see so you got 1 to 10 numbers right you got 1 to 10 numbers because i value is 1 so 1 less than equals to 10 is true so 1 got displayed after that what happened 1 became 2 i plus plus means i plus 1 i plus 1 means 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 means it became 2 again it is going and con checking the condition while 2 less than 10 is yes, 2 less than 10 is also true so 2 value get displayed and 2 will be incremented by 1 and 2 becomes 3 now since 3 is less than 10, again 3 will be displayed and 3 will be incremented by 4. And 4 is less than 10, 5 is less than 10, it displays, 6 is less than 10, it displays. Once it reaches 10, so 10 is less than equals to 10 true, so 10 will be displayed and 10 becomes 11. 11 less than equals to 10, this loop fails, right? 11 is not less than equals to 10, immediately you quit from the loop and so you come out from the while loop. So what is the result is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I want 10 to 1, how to do that? Int i equal to 10 while uh, yes. i equal greater than or equal to 10 i my, uh, you need i minus minus yeah you need to come back right while i greater than 0 or greater than equals to 1 both are true and what you want to do is that you just want to come in a backward direction so loops will help you in finding the logic now 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 leaves means until the i value is greater than 0, so I am displaying natural numbers in reverse order. So this is how a while loop will be working. 
so while loop is called control enter loop why because so you can enter into this block while block only if this condition is true this is called control enter loop control enter loop is it clear how the while loop is being executing yeah yeah next do while do while the same thing but the structure is a bit dif different so you need to write do first and all your block statements and then while condition and here this condition will terminate with a semicolon do the condition will be written at end that is the reason it is called control exit loop while is called control enter loop uh, like do while is called control exit loop like if you want to uh, travel through train what you do is that you will take a ticket and then enter into the train like when you are traveling in a bus you need to enter into the bus and then take a ticket like so it's a control enter loop is a while loop control exit loop is that do while loop means first you need to execute and then check the condition if the condition is satisfied whatever the execution done will be reflected if not it will be get back to the previous state so the same thing we can achieve through do while also what kind of modification I need to do here if I want to display 10 numbers in reverse order here instead of while I need to write here do so at the end of the loop what I need to write here the while statement while i greater than 0 and I need to put a semicolon over here save it and if you try to execute see you will get the same output means you can realize a loop either using while or using a do while also doesn't matter but when to use while when to use do while is that it's up to the developer uh, vision will because do while loop is like it is not checking the condition suppose of course we do don't bother about the performance issues and then throughput of the program and all but when parallel algorithms are being done so data mining is being done so each and every microsecond is valuable like suppose if you're taking like three nanoseconds to execute one particular instruction let's say one particular statement is taking three nanoseconds means in order to save three nanoseconds what I can do is that instead of writing the condition at the beginning I can write at the end so meanwhile I am utilizing those three nanoseconds effectively prior if the condition is true the result will be reflected earlier if the condition is false it reverts back means it depends so when to use while and when to use do while is completely like uh, based on the developer's choice so these loops and conditions are for the developers but we make use of these loops and conditions in our uh, automation testing also so while loop the same thing you can achieve is the do while loop but here what is the similarities of while loop and do while loop both are the same but here what you need to do is that you need to write the condition and at the same time you need to update the loop by yourself there is no special structure for updating the loop so is there any special structure for that loop yes we have another loop called we have another loop called for loop how the for loop structure looks like a bit different from while and do while for you have three entities one is initialization initialization means we made i equals to one initially right that should made statement initialization and you write condition what is the condition i less than equals to 10 is the condition what is the updation you made inside i plus plus right i minus minus so you have a structure for initialization condition and updation and then you write your statements over here this is how a for loop looks like for initialization condition and then updation it is giving a organized structure means what is the initial state of the loop and what is the final state of the loop and how each and every time the loop control variable should be updated whether it is minus minus or plus plus it doesn't matter let's say 
we'll see i want to display some pattern like this 0 2 4 6 8 what is the pattern you observe like It's increasing zero by two. two. Yeah, I'm increasing by two. So this statement, yeah, yeah, we we make with the help of. Let's suppose I want to display until twenty. For demo. Let's say int your i you are taking from zero. How to write for loop? For i equals to zero. If you are not going to write here, you can directly write here also. I don't want to declare here. You can declare variable in for loop itself. For int i equals to zero. Semicolon until twenty. Right? I less than equals to 20 and I should be incremented by 2 right I should be incremented by 2 I plus 2 so what you want to do I value should be displayed means the three loops will perform the same thing but perform in a different manner so 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 means what is the main agenda or main intention in writing the loops is that whenever you feel like you need to uh, repeat a particular set of statements again and again based on a particular condition we use loops so the most critical part in basic programming is to understand the loops of course we did the basic understanding of loops we'll, we'll do a couple of example on while do and for so that we can get better understanding on loops is it clear like this is the thing?